This is Hillary Rodham Clinton, former first lady, US senator, and two-time presidential candidate. But you know, third time's a charm, right? In 2008, when Senator Clinton lost the Democratic presidential nomination to Senator Barack Obama, her consolation prize was to be nominated as Obama's Secretary of State. However, there were some concerns. Concerns about the Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation was originally created to raise funds to build the Clinton Presidential Center. However, it quickly evolved into a charity with a global reach that has raised over $2 billion, much of it from foreign governments, foreign donors, and foreign corporations. With Hillary Clinton being closely affiliated to the foundation, but also being in charge of US foreign policy, there could be the potential of numerous conflicts of interest, or at least the appearance of such. And this concerned the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The main issue related to Senator Clinton's nomination that has occupied the committee has been the review of how her service as Secretary of State can be reconciled with the sweeping global activities of President Bill Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. The core of the problem is that foreign governments and entities may perceive the Clinton Foundation as a means to gain favor with the Secretary of State. The Clinton Foundation exists as a temptation for any foreign entity or government that believes it could curry favor through a donation. It also sets up potential perception problems with any action taken by the Secretary of State in relation to foreign givers or their countries. So what would be the best solution to reconcile this? The only certain way to eliminate this risk going forward is for the Clinton Foundation to forswear new foreign contributions when Senator Clinton becomes Secretary of State. So to ensure the integrity of the US State Department, would the Clinton Foundation stop taking foreign donations? Yeah, right. Instead, a memorandum of understanding was written up between President-elect Obama's transition team and the CEO of the Clinton Foundation. Uh, the memorandum of understanding uh, is, as you know, public. Uh, and the President-elect and the Foundation and I have all worked to be uh, very transparent. Here are the most important parts of the memorandum. The Clinton Foundation would be required to notify the State Department Ethics Office if a new foreign country wanted to contribute to the Foundation, and if an existing country wanted to increase their contributions to the Foundation. The Foundation also stated that they would publish annually the names of new contributors. All contributors will be disclosed, and all contributors to the Clinton Global Initiative are disclosed in public uh, as of uh, now anyway. Seems simple enough. I mean, what could go wrong? In 2010, the Algerian government, which was lobbying the State Department over human rights issues, donated $500,000 to the Clinton Foundation. However, the Foundation didn't report it to the State Department Ethics Office, as required by the Memorandum of Understanding. The donation wasn't disclosed until it was reported by the Washington Post in 2015. In 2009, the U.S. Department of Justice and the IRS were concerned that bank accounts held by American customers at Switzerland's largest bank, UBS, were being used for purposes of tax evasion and asked for as many as 52,000 of those accounts to be revealed by the Swiss. This would be bad for business, as Swiss banks are known for their strict bank-client confidentiality and a culture of banking secrecy. The Swiss foreign minister met with Secretary of State Clinton. Clinton advocated that the US Department of Justice and the IRS be lenient towards the Swiss government. In turn, the US government settled with the Swiss and only a fraction of the accounts were revealed. After things calmed down, the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, which is overseen by the Swiss Foreign Ministry, gave the Clinton Health Access Initiative $486,000 in 2011. The one-time donation to Chai had not been reported to the Ethics Office and was only publicly disclosed by the Foundation after being uncovered by a Swiss news outlet in 2016. In 2011, according to an email from Amitab Desai, a foreign policy advisor to the Clinton Foundation, the state of Qatar pledged to give the Clinton Foundation a $1 million gift to celebrate Bill Clinton's birthday. The foundation never ran this by the ethics office, 
nor was it publicly disclosed. The pledge was only discovered after WikiLeaks published stolen emails from Clinton advisor John Podesta's Gmail account. In 2010, President Clinton gave a speech in Bangkok that was paid for by the Thai Energy Ministry and a state-owned oil and gas company, PTT. But the fee was not listed on Secretary Clinton's 2010 financial disclosure form, which was required by law. In 2015, when the media asked about the discrepancy, they claimed that Clinton's fee was donated to the foundation. But if it was a donation, it should have been reported to the State Department Ethics Office as required by the MOU. Either way, the fact that it took five years for the foundation to disclose the donation is troubling. Also in 2015, Reuters reported that the Clinton Health Access Initiative didn't properly disclose their donors from 2010 to 2013 as required by the agreement. A CHI spokesperson said the charity should have published donor lists in 2011 and 2012 when Clinton was in office and said not doing so was an oversight. CHI published a partial donor list for the first time this year. A spokesman for Hillary Clinton declined to comment. Then there were new countries that made donations to the foundation like Rwanda, Sweden, Papua New Guinea, and Flanders that were never disclosed to the ethics office. All contributors will be disclosed. As you can see, the ethics agreement was blatantly violated several times. So did the foundation try and rectify the situation by returning the money to the Clintons? Hilarious. Uh, very transparent. And even though the ethics agreement was blatantly violated, the State Department decided it didn't care. Uh, the State Department has not and does not intend to initiate a formal review or to make a retroactive judgment um, about items that were not submitted uh, during Secretary Clinton's tenure. We aren't aware of any actions taken by Secretary Clinton that were influenced by donations to the Clinton Foundation or its offshoots or by speech honoraria and consultancies of former President Clinton. Okay, but why not? I mean, why do you not intend Again, we, are, to... we aren't aware of any actions uh, well, taken. Well, I know you're not aware because you haven't looked into them, right? Well, but again, let's let's. The Obama administration was never going to properly investigate Hillary because it would have made him look stupid. Obama got played. Womp womp. But what about the question that I promised to answer in my last video? Did Secretary Clinton violate the emoluments clause? Well, it depends on how broadly you interpret the clause. Article one, section nine, clause eight. No person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall, without the consent of the Congress, accept of any present, emolument, office, or title of any kind whatever from any king, prince, or foreign state. Which means appointed officials in the United States can't accept money, gifts, or emoluments from a foreign government that could potentially influence or corrupt them. In August 2009, while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, her husband, President Clinton, gave a speech at the Canadian National Exhibition in Toronto, Canada. President Clinton received a $175,000 fee. The speech was paid for by a tourism promotion agency of the Canadian government. In June 2010, while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, Renaissance Capital, a Russian investment bank whose senior officials include former Russian intelligence personnel, gave President Clinton half a million dollars for a 60-minute speech. It should be noted that most of all of the banks in Russia are controlled in some manner by the Kremlin, which would mean that the payment was connected to a foreign state. In 2011, when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, the Abu Dhabi Global Environment Data Initiative, an organization that was created by Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the United Arab Emirates and Emir of Abu Dhabi, paid President Clinton a $500,000 fee for a speech. That means that the speech was paid for by a foreign state. In October 2010, while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, President Clinton received a $250,000 fee to speak at an event in Egypt that was partially sponsored by Eti Salat. Eti Salat is a Middle Eastern telecommunications company that is majority owned by the United Arab Emirates government. So a portion of President Clinton's fee was paid for by a foreign state. Okay, I know what you're thinking. 
Where are you going with this, Andrew? Bill and Hillary Clinton filed their taxes jointly. Hillary received a direct financial and economic benefit from Bill's income that partially came from foreign states. And that means that she violated the emoluments clause. But this is by interpreting the clause very broadly. But if you're going to claim that President Trump benefits every time someone from a foreign state pays for a room at his hotel, then you have to admit that Secretary Clinton benefited from foreign state payments to her husband for speeches. And one of these things is not like the other. Thanks for watching, sharing, and hitting that like button. Check out the links in the description to help support my content. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to join the notification squad. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you next time.